Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Morgan. And this is EB, EB in the Sticks. Listen, if you want more information on how to make the electric vehicle switch out in the sticks, out in rural America, whether it's the Great Plains or the mountains, make sure you comment on this video what you would like to see us cover in the future. Also, be sure to like and subscribe. It is important for this channel. It is critical to our channel's survival. This week, we decided to press the pause button on the Electric Vehicle Basic Series, though we will be getting back to it, so that we could cover a major news story on the development of some charging technology. If you like this kind of content and you're ready for more, then like this video, comment what you want us to cover, and subscribe to this channel, and you'll be there for all the best content that we release. Yeah, there is uh, the number one issue stopping people from going EV immediately is that charging. They won't want to sit more than, you know, they want to plug in and then unplug and go. They want to charge in five minutes like they you want, do a gas car. If you can fill an ice car in five minutes, they want to fill an electric car in five minutes. That's the biggest thing holding people back. It turns out Project Edison at Ford has actually been working with Purdue University and might have a solution. Do you want to talk about some of the technical specifics there? We've got a new cable that's out and, or it's not out, it just got developed. The way the charging system works, when you get into a DC fast charger, they have a cable that goes into your car and that cable actually has liquid coolant in it and uh, keeps that cable from getting too hot. Because if you've ever had a cable that will direct short in your car, you, you know, melt the, melt the wire. So this cable gets a lot more electricity through it and it will melt. They have to actually cool it and they have a liquid coolant that goes inside of that cable in a CCS or a Tesla charger. Now, the new development, the new story, what they did was they changed how they cooled that cable. Well, currently it's pumped with liquid, but it's going to be more like an AC unit. It's going to be like the evaporator of an AC unit. It's going to expand the gas and then contract it back into a liquid, and it's going to cause the cooling on that cable. So it's going to switch from liquid to vapor. Liquid to vapor, and then back from vapor to liquid. And if that change is the, is the point where it freezes, and they're keeping that. That's when evaporation is happening. Basically. Right. Okay. So... That is their development, is that they're starting a whole new way of cooling the cable that they've ever done before. Uh, and it's going to, they say they're going to be able to charge a car in five minutes. The reason they'll be able to charge in five minutes, this cooling system is effective up to a cable running 2,400 amps. For reference, the, the gold standard of electric vehicle charging right now is hands down Tesla. Would you agree that that's fair agree. to say? So, and, the, and those Tesla superchargers run at 540 amps. The promise here is that they'll, char they'll be able to run 2,400. That can charge a car in five minutes. But it's all dependent on what the input of the battery can take as well. Now, this is a fairly manageable problem. They can put similar cooling infrastructure into the DC to DC converters on electric cars and make sure that those are cooled the same way, et cetera. But what that means is this is not going to benefit my 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV. It's not going to benefit his 2020. It's not going to benefit existing electric vehicles. You're going to need a vehicle that is designed for a battery to be able to input as much charge as this charging cable is throwing out. 2,400 amps would turn you into ash almost instantly. Let's give it a different outlook. Currently, I have a vehicle that charges at 50 amps. 
That's it's, it's 50 or 60 amps is like its max capacity that it can take a charge. 54 kilowatt hours, but yes, not amps, kilowatts. You're right. A level two charger at my house had, you can buy level two chargers, 30, 40, 60. You can even now through Ford get their new 80 amp level two charger. Um, it's changing. There's, they got new technology, and it's going to mean that when you drive, you're going to be able to stop, get a pop, pop that in, and go, just like you do with your ICE vehicle. So I think it's fair to say that this is absolutely a game changer in the electric vehicle space. I do have to wonder how the heck they got that done. Well, we know that in order to make these advancements happen, it takes engineers. We also know that with a mad dash to get everybody changed over to electric cars by GM and Ford and Stellantis, and they're all chasing Tesla and nipping at Tesla's heels, we know there's a lot of competition for these engineers. And you know what else I noticed? When you and I were reading the press release from Ford, on this development, piece of news and a piece of news. Absolutely. There's a piece of news and the piece of news. When you and I read the press release from Ford, it said that the alliance between Ford and Purdue University is part of hundreds of strategic alliances that the company has with university professors around the world. So they're doing this at more than one college? Correct. It sounds to me like what Ford is attempting to do is compete with Tesla. And why? So they're competing with Tesla? They've been competing with Tesla all along. No, they're competing with Tesla in terms of labor pools. We know that there's a massive labor shortage and trying to fill extremely... Skilled. Skilled positions like engineers at major automotive companies is not something easy to do. Furthermore, we know that Tesla has had the corner on the market in terms of labor for quite some time. Tesla and SpaceX are the top two, Number two. targets for engineering students. And they're kind of together. Basically, well, there's a lot of synergy, I think, would be the correct uh, MBA term here. There's a lot of synergy between Tesla and SpaceX, and Ford doesn't have that, but it sounds like Ford's idea is to get into the classroom early so that the engineers they target have already been working on Ford projects for some time. It's an interesting strategy. And there's not just Ford and Tesla and SpaceX trying for this. I mean, these engineers are also wanted by Martin Lockheed and uh, you can get them around these other companies. There's a bunch of them. There are 10 companies I know that they're all clamoring for engineers. Here's my thing for you, Morgan. What do you think of this? There have been seven trillion dollar companies in the history of the world. Seven? Seven. I didn't know there was one. Well, one of those seven is Tesla. Ford is not now and has never been a trillion dollar company. There's only been seven. Does Ford have what it takes to, honest to God, mount a serious competition to Tesla for engineering talent? I don't know. That sounds like it's awful, awful big field there because you're trying to take some from the big boys on the block, but it's not just you alone. GM, Stellantis. Everybody is trying to go electric. Everybody wants lead electrical and mechanical engineers. I think that's the story here. Those that yeah. graduate over the next two years are going into that field. Correct. They're going to get the biggest dollar to get in now, and they'll be on the bottom. They'll be able to, as it goes up, they'll, they'll be, be there. there. Yeah. So the thing of it is, I don't think this story is about the charging cable at all. Yes, this charging cable or something like it is going to hit the market in the net in the coming years. Absolutely. And the companies that already have the fastest charging batteries like Tesla and Porsche and others are going to be the first to have battery inputs that can take this kind of current. There is other technologies coming out. This wasn't what we were initially covering, but another thing that's been done is charging on the highway. 
which university wasn't built a highway on their campus? It's not a university. It's it's uh, the state of Indiana has a trial program. And I don't know the ins and outs of how that mechanically works. No, but they have, bar- they have joined up with, again, engineers are trying to develop the highway to charge your car as you drive over it. So I think the story within the story here isn't about the charging cable that's going to be trickling onto the market in the coming years. The story here is who in this time of a major labor shortage is going to win the battle for the best engineers because the company that wins the battle for the best engineers have the best products. They're going to win the EV war. And I got to be honest, if I'm a betting man, I probably bet on Tesla. However, that doesn't take away from Ford's Ah, innovative step to try to recruit in the classrooms here. And it's going to be massive. We're going to see some big changes on all this. Absolutely, we will. Listen, you can rest assured that we are going to cover every major story happening in this space. We are going to cover all the technological developments. We're going to cover the infrastructure developments that are needed to make electric vehicles viable out here in the sticks. If you're getting value from this content, learning when EVs are going to charge in five minutes, learning how you can make an EV work in your lifestyle when they don't charge in five minutes. Or if you want to know how you're going to make it through the winter with an electric car, because you've never seen that done before. Subscribe to this channel. We're going to be cover winter electric vehicle range, which is not as good as summer. We're going to cover the winter electric vehicle charging curves, which isn't as good as summer. We're going to cover what it takes to do EVs out here in in, in places like Nebraska, the in Great Lakes, in the sticks, <laughs> places like the mountains, the Smoky Mountains, the 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 Rocky. Rocky Mountains, the Great Plains, everywhere that you consider the sticks. Just comment. Let us know where you're watching this from, because we're going to have the content. That's going to make it possible for you to go electric vehicle this year. If you like this kind of content and you're ready for more, then like this video, comment what you want us to cover, and subscribe to this channel, and you'll be there for all the best content that we release. This has been EV in the Sticks.